natural look is T-O-N-I. Tony. Tony. Tony Home Permanent, the wave that gives that natural look, brings you Crime Photographer. Good evening, everyone. This is Bill Cullen greeting you for Tony Home Permanent and inviting you to listen to another adventure of Casey, crime photographer, ace cameraman who covers the crime news of a great city. Our adventure for tonight, Scene of the Crime. Evening in the Blue Note Cafe. <laughs> Yeah, but, Casey, what's so funny? <laughs> Look, Casey, I don't want to be in the blue note all my life. I'm only striving for self-improvement, like the ad said. I am dissatisfied with my present lot. <laughs> well, Bert, that, that's fine. I, I admire you. And I guess there are a lot of things that you can learn by correspondence course, but why did you pick on being a detective? Well, gee whiz, Casey. I want to be like you. You... Yeah. Well, I, I'm flattered. Well, in that case, why did you take a course in photography? Well, you see... Yeah. Well, Casey, I don't like to say this, well, go but... go on now. I think you're a lousy photographer. What? But I think you're a swell detective. Swell. I am the best confounded photographer the Express ever had. Uh, the way know? you go out and solve cases, the way you catch criminals, I think that's wonderful. Well... You'll never learn to do that by some correspondence course. The ad says, satisfaction guaranteed. Oh, sure, sure. What do they call this course, anyway? How to be a detective in 10 easy lessons? 12 easy lessons. 12. Yeah, I just got the third one this morning. Look. Uh, how to identify an unidentified corpse. Yes, sir. It tells all about how to identify corpses. It's... Oh, hello, Miss Williams. Hello, Ethelbert. Come on, Casey. Huh? Where? Out to the county turnpike. A murder was just committed there, and the corpse is still unidentified. <laughs> Are you a pin-up girl? Not the kind whose pictures the teenagers pin up on the wall, but one who puts her hair up in pin curls night after night? Well, you can save yourself all that trouble easily with Tony Home Permanent. Once you have a Tony, you're carefree, almost as if you had naturally curly hair. Come wind or rain or sleet, you don't have to worry, for your beautiful Tony wave is in to stay. Tony is the permanent that gives you this twin guarantee. Your Tony Wave is guaranteed to last just as long as the most expensive wave you've ever had. And your Tony is guaranteed to look more natural or your money back. Tomorrow, get the Tony Kit, complete with plastic curlers for $2. And you'll discover why more than 2 million women each month find long-lasting, carefree loveliness with Tony Home Permanent. The wave that gives that natural look. T-O-N-I. Tony. Andy, I wonder how Logan's going to feel about this. I don't know how he'll feel. Terrible. Hey, Casey, it sure was a lucky break for you. Joe coming in to relieve me at the Blue Note just as you and Miss Williams was leaving, huh? Yeah. Now I can identify your body for you. Yeah, <clears throat> sure. Well, uh... Come on, kids. Let's have a look at it. Right. Right. Hiya, Logan. What you got there? We got the report on the murder. Oh, hello, How... Casey, Miss Williams. A murder was committed, all right. A blow on the head so far. We haven't identified the body. No billfold or anything else that might give us a lead. A uh, robbery, the motive? Looks that way, Miss Williams. Yeah, take man. All there. right, everybody. All right. Stand back. Give him the air. <laughs> Silbert. Oh, Silbert, what are you doing here? Oh, hello, Captain Logan. I'm taking a course in detecting, and I just... You. Uh... What? You heard him, Logan. Etherbert's going to give us a hand detecting. Oh. It's not bad enough, Casey, to have you on my neck everywhere I now, go. Now, Logan, you know you love it's it. It's not bad enough to have Miss Williams trailing me around. Why, Captain Logan, how can you be so ungallant? That's not enough. Now, now I have to have this... Uh, this no, 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 wait a minute, Logan. Just, Mag, no. come over here, pal, just a minute. I want to talk to you. Casey, I won't have it. Now, Logan, you listen to me. I've done some favors for you. You have not. I have, and you know it. I'll keep on working with you and doing my darndest to cooperate. What is this, Casey, an inaugural address? I'm just asking a favor of you. Now, don't 
hurt Ethelbert's feelings, or so help me, I'll scuff up every footprint I can find and wipe off every fingerprint in sight. No, you wouldn't. No, I know, I wouldn't. But you wouldn't hurt Ethelbert's feelings either, now, would you, pal? <laughs> You're a nice guy, Casey. You really are. The trouble is you got too many dumb friends. All right, let Ethelbert go to work. My tech men have finished anyway. Yeah, I know, look. Okay. Did you find out who the dead guy is yet, Ethelbert? Yeah. How about it, Ethelbert? Well, it's this way. I've checked the diseased for laundry marks, physical characteristics, signs of recent struggle, and other highly indicative points. Yes? But I didn't find out who he was. I see. Okay, boys, cover him up. Note, we'll... however, at the state of the cranial section, it has obviously been shattered by a projectant blow, which, for reasons not yet apparent, uh, hey. Hey, what? Hey, I know this guy. His name's Dave Wilson. What's up, Logan? Boys here at headquarters have any information? Yeah, the dead man's name was Dave Wilson. But I already told you that three hours ago. Quiet, oh. Ethelbert. That's official, Logan? His brother just identified him over at the morgue. Then it's official. Well, I ought to know Dave Wilson when I see him. I'd better get in touch with Annie. Now, don't bother. She got the story by phone from Flanagan. I've known Dave Wilson for five years. Ethelbert, you can go now. But We're I... very grateful to you for identifying Wilson, but we're busy. Go home. Goodbye. But, Captain Logan, I got to stay on the case. I've been studying up on how to be a detective, and I think sometimes you uh, employ archaic methods and proceed from false hypotheses. Uh, Casey, I... get rid of that guy. Get him out of here. Uh, or... You'll nothing, nothing. Oh. Ethelbert, if you want to sit here and listen, you'll have to be very quiet. All right, Casey. But I did tell him three hours ago it was Dave Wilson. Uh, <clears throat> what about Wilson's record, Logan? Yeah, he hasn't got one. Not a thing. Not even a parking ticket. No, Dave Wilson. Ethelbert? A very nice guy. <clears throat> Look, Logan, let's get down to brass tacks. What have we got to go on? Well, you know, Casey, it looks to me like a gang or grudge killing. It has all the signs. Mm, all the signs except a corpse with a police record. As far as we know, this Wilson was a perfectly law-abiding citizen. Well, as far as we know, sure. Dave Wilson wasn't no criminal. Ethelbert, be quiet. Dave Wilson wouldn't have got bumped off in no gang killing. How do you know? Because Dave Wilson wasn't no crook. He was a very nice guy. Oh, no, shut up, Ethelbert. You don't know anything about Dave Wilson. I know he was a very nice guy. He used to come around the Blue Note almost every week to make a collection. Collection? Sure, that was Dave's business. He took bets on the numbers. Oh. He what? Well, you know, you place a bet on the numbers. Holy they... jumping Jupiter. Why didn't you say so before? Huh? That's the answer. Gang killing, huh, Logan? Yeah, you bet. Who's the top dog in the numbers uh, right now? Bugs Benson, and he's been trying to pressure all the little guys out of the business. Well, yeah, it looks like he pressured Dave Wilson out of it. And it looks like we've got him. We'll just pick up Bugs, and he'd better have a darn good alibi or else. Yeah, he's... Uh, say, Ethelbert, that's the second time today you've come up with the right answer. If you're not careful, you'll turn out to be a success. Hello, Ethelbert. How's our private eye this evening? Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, hello, Miss Swims. I was just reading a paper. You were, huh? What page? Well, uh... <laughs> Don't tell me, let me guess. Page two, column four. Caption under photograph, quote, Ethelbert, bartender at the Blue Note Cafe, who yesterday proved a valuable ally to the police by identifying the body of David Wilson, petty racketeer. Unquote. Yeah, that's it. Gee, it was awful nice of you and Casey to put my picture in the paper, Miss Williams. Well, you deserved it, Ethelbert. Yeah. Say, uh, Miss Williams, do you like this picture of me? Maybe a little too much tie? Hmm. No. I don't know. Sometimes Casey's lighting ain't so good. You know, Miss Williams, I think he ought to stick to detecting. I think he ought to stick to photography. What do you mean? He's been following Logan's men around all day trying to find Muggs Benson. Any luck? Nope. Miss Williams, it pains me to say this, but the reason nobody can't find Muggs Benson is that they ain't looking in the right place. Ethelbert, they've looked everywhere. Not the right place. It just so happens that I happen to have here with me chapter four of my detecting course, wherein it is printed, and I quote, quote, the criminal always returns to the scene of the crime, unquote. Ethelbert, 
criminals do not return to the scene of the crime anymore. But, Miss Williams, it's what it says right here in, in print. You can't believe everything you read, Ethelbert. Well, that's a fine thing for you to say, Miss Williams, a reporter. Who should know better? As soon as Joe comes in to relieve me at the bar, I'll drive you out to the scene of the crime. What for? To prove the criminal will be there. Oh, no. Ethelbert, you can't just drive to the scene of the crime and conveniently find a criminal waiting there for uh, you. You'll see, Miss Williams. You'll see when we arrive at the scene of the crime, there will be a shadowy figure creeping about in the moonlight, searching for telltale clues to remove. Ethelbert, this is the most ridiculous. Shh, shh, shh. Honestly, if Casey ever finds out I came out here. Miss Williams. What? Look over there in the moonlight. <gasps> Good heavens. A shadowy figure creeping about in the moonlight. But what's he doing there? Searching for telltale clues to remove. You mean you think it's Muggs Benson? Why not? Like the lesson said, a criminal always returns to the scene of the crime. Did the lesson tell you what to do with the criminal when you found him? Well, in such cases, the approved solution is to detain a fugitive until such time as such help as can be obtained is obtained. I see. Well, do you think you could detain while I obtain? Uh, huh? Do you think you can slug that man and sit on him while I go for help? Gee, I don't know. No, if only Casey were here. What would Casey do? He'd be creep up behind Benson and slug him. Okay. Ethelbert, what are you going to do? Creep up behind Benson and slug him. Oh, Ethelbert, be careful, please. Remember, it's a murderer. I'll remember. Okay, you... I got him. I got him, Miss Williams. I got him. Wonderful, Ethelbert. Can you keep him there while I go and get help? Sure, he's out cold. And anyhow, I'm sitting on his head. Well, if he's unconscious, let's take a look at him. Okay. Gosh, won't Casey be proud of us, Miss Williams? You certainly will. Have you got a match? <laughs> yeah, sure. Here. Oh, fine. <laughs> I can't wait to see Casey's face. <laughs> Ethelbert! What is it, Miss Williams? Ethelbert, you said you couldn't wait to see Casey's face. Yeah, that's right. Well, then take a good look. This isn't Muggs Benson, Ethelbert. The man you just slugged is Casey. Huh? <laughs> Hi, Ethelbert. Say, uh, what's this I hear about your turning detective? I had to dash right over and find out about it. Oh, it was nothing, Mr. Cullen. Oh. I just happened to know that Dave Wilson. Well, now that you're famous, I suppose you're going uh, on with this uh, new profession of yours, huh? Yeah, I guess it's going to be really easy for me to be a detective, especially yeah. when I get some more lessons. Yeah. Hmm. But I'd like to go around with Casey all I can for practice, you know. Mm -hmm. And, of uh, course... Uh, I like helping him out. Uh, I'll help you get some practice, Ethelbert. How about it? Swell, Mr. Collins. All right, now I'll give you three clues, and by your superpower of deduction, see if you can tell me what I'm talking about, all right? Mm. One, it's a home permanent that's used by more women than all other cold waves combined. Maybe Two, you mean... Two, it's the wave that gives that natural look. Oh, that's... Three, it's the home wave that's guaranteed to last as long as the most expensive beauty shop wave. Well, give me a Ethelbert, chance. Ethelbert, I know right what you're going to say. Tony, home permanent. You see, everybody knows that Tony gives a wave that's soft and easy to manage, natural looking from the very first moment. With Tony, you get waves so soft, they, they look like naturally curly hair. With Tony, there's no frizzy stage. What's more, it's Tony that gives you this twin guarantee. Your Tony is guaranteed to last just as long as the most expensive wave you've ever had. And your Tony is guaranteed to look more natural or your money back. So get a Tony kit tomorrow. It costs just $1 with plastic curlers that can be used again and again, only $2. When you see how much lovelier you look and how long your Tony lasts, you'll know why each month more than 2 million women use Tony Home Permanent. More than 2 million? Mm-hmm. That's a lot of... a lot of women. Yes, Ethelbert. Now, each month, another 2 million women give themselves lovely Tony waves. <laughs> Here, Miss Williams. Bring him into my office. All right, Captain Logan. Here, Casey. Oh. Sit down. I don't want to sit down. Leave me alone. Logan! 
How would you like to pinch that nitwit Ethelbert for assault and battery? I wouldn't think of it. Oh. Does your eye still hurt? Of course it hurts. <laughs> <laughs> well, what are you laughing at, Logan? Hey, you, Hawkshaw. That sure is a beautiful shiner. Who'd have thought Ethelbert pegged such a wallop? Uh, just wait till I get my hands on that bird brain. Oh. <laughs> now, Casey, you leave Ethelbert alone. He didn't mean any harm. What was the idea of going out to the murder spot anyhow, Casey? Logan, occasionally, evidence is found at the scene of the crime. It has happened. Uh, my boys went over the place. And occasionally your boys miss things. That has happened, too. Well, here's something they didn't miss. All right, Flanagan, send them in. Send who in? Muggs Benson. My boys picked him up a half hour ago. They did? Yep. He's in. Oh, hello, Muggs. Greetings, Captain. Sit down. Thanks. I hear you've been looking for me. That's putting it mildly, Muggs. I also hear you got a notion that I bumped off Dave Wilson. Right again. Well, uh, for old time's sake, Captain, I'm going to give you a little tip. You're wrong. Pretty sure of yourself, huh, Muggs? Oh, hi, Casey. Yeah, I'm pretty sure myself. Yeah? All right, let's have it. What's your alibi this time? Well, according to the time Sergeant Flanagan tells me the killing took place, I happen to be at a basketball game at the Armory. Can you prove that? Sure, I can prove it. I was sitting right next to Judge Sibley. <laughs> have a cigar, Captain. <laughs> All right, Muggs. Judge Sibley corroborates your story. You can go now. Thanks, Captain. But don't go too far. Why should I? So long, all. So Muggs long. didn't have a thing to do with his killing, Logan. Uh, call me in the morning if you need any help. Uh, call you? I happen to have a police department at my disposal. Doing great, too, isn't it? Call me in the morning. Oh, oh, oh. Ethelbert, what? Casey, the... when you opened that door, you got me right in the eye. <laughs> it makes us even. What was your eye doing there, anyhow? I was looking through the keyhole at Muggs Benson. Casey, he ain't the criminal type. The criminal type has got broad, flat features, small eyes, jutting chin, and... Uh... Gee whiz, Captain Logan, you are a perfect criminal type. Yeah. What? Ethelbert, uh, look, suppose you just go back to the Blue Note Oh, Cafe Joe's over there relieving me. I gotta stay on this case. Uh, sorry, Ethelbert, but I'm afraid there isn't any case. A guy got killed, wasn't he? Yeah, we haven't got a case against anybody. Well, then we gotta make one. Justice has gotta triumph. Yeah, well, it doesn't have to triumph tonight. I'm going home. Oh, no, you're not. Burke wants a story and some pictures of the bereaved family. We've got to take a run over there. Swell, I'll go with you. Like it says in Lesson 2. Huh? Lesson 2. The answer to a perplexing problem is often to be found in the daily trivia of the personages involved therein. Come on, what are we waiting for? I'm sorry my mother isn't in, Mr. Casey, but she's awfully upset about Dave's accident. and I don't think she ought to talk to the newspapers anyhow. Oh, I see. Well, uh... Uh, Mr. Uh, Wilson. Buddy. Uh, My name's Buddy Wilson. Yeah, well, Buddy, I'd like to get a few shots of the house and of you, and Miss Williams here would like a few facts. Well, gee, sure. I'll wait in the next room, Casey. Yeah, sure, Ethel, but we won't be long. All right, now your name is uh, Buddy Wilson. That's right. And the murdered man was your brother. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. How about looking over here for a minute, Buddy? That's yeah. it. Hold it. Thank you. Your older brother, Buddy? Yes. Dave was 30, but... I'm older than I look. Huh? How old? 21. You have no idea who might have killed your brother, buddy? No, ma'am. I didn't know much about Dave at all, except that he gave Mom a lot of worry. I just tried to keep her from knowing too much about his kind of work. Well, okay, that does it for me. How about you, Annie? Hmm, yeah, I, I've got what I want. Ethelbert! You call me, Casey? Yeah, we're ready to go now. Just pack up these film holders. Hey, just a minute. Mr. Wilson, would you turn around that way for a minute? Well, sure, but... Uh-huh. Now the other profile, please. Ethelbert, what the... Uh-huh. Okay, Casey, I'm ready to go. Ethelbert, 
What in the name of heaven was the idea of that last rigmarole about Buddy Wilson's profile? Casey, Miss Williams, that man is the murderer. I can tell. What do you mean, you can tell? Criminal type, written all over his face. I was studying his contours. That blue-eyed, blonde-haired little cherub, Ethelbert, he's got a baby face. So had baby face Nelson. That oh. man is a killer, Miss Williams, and I got the proof of it on this box. Ethelbert, where'd you get that cigarette box? From Buddy Wilson's house. I swiped Are you crazy? You could be arrested for stealing uh, that. Uh-uh, Casey, don't touch. I'm going to take it back as soon as I look for fingerprints. Oh, well, what good are fingerprints? We don't have any of the murderer to compare these with. This box is going to be lousy with Buddy Wilson's fingerprints. Well, of course it is. It's his cigarette box. Why wouldn't it have his prints on it? Casey, you're just belittling on account of you didn't think of it yourself. Oh, Ethel. All right, all right. But if I was you, I'd investigate Buddy Wilson right away. Well, I, I'm certainly not going to. All right, let a criminal escape. Ignore justice. I'm not ignoring justice. Might as well just open the jail doors. Might as well give everybody a gun. That has nothing just... to do with it. Can't even take the trouble to investigate a vicious criminal. You can't, you can't all even... All right, all right. All right, I'll, I'll investigate, but he will... But for one reason only, understand? What's that? To keep you quiet. <laughs> Blue Note Cafe, Ethelbert speaking. Uh, hello, Ethelbert. This is Casey. I, um, I just wanted to tell you that I've been checking Buddy Wilson's record. Yeah? Yeah. I'll read you what I have. Huh. Buddy Wilson. Criminal offenses, none. Arrests, none. Occupation, salesman. General remarks, graduated high school with honors. Class valedictorian. Sings in church choir. Sole support of aging widowed mother. Well, how's that for a record, Ethelbert? That's fine, Casey, just fine. <laughs> we all make mistakes sometimes, Ethelbert. Yeah, sure. So you'd better return that cigarette box you swiped from Wilson. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Did you find any fingerprints on it? Yeah, sure. Whose? Mine. <laughs> Hey, Herman, Walter says your dinner's ready in the back room and there's no customers in the place, so why don't you knock off? Uh, now, let's see, where was I? Oh, uh, the study of ballistics is extremely complicated. Excuse me. This particular phase of detection is... <clears throat> Excuse me. Oh, I didn't hear you come in, sir. What a Hey, you're Buddy Wilson. That's right. Well, what do you know, Buddy Wilson? What can I do for you? I'd like my cigarette box, please. Oh, sure. I, I was planning to take it back to you tomorrow, but now that you're here... I'll I... save you the trip. Uh, May I have it, please? Well, sure, I got it right here. Your cigarettes are all still in it. I, I couldn't get the box open. It's a trick Chinese box. You have to know the right combination to get it open. Yeah, I guess you have to know just where to press it. Pretty box. Here you are. Oh, I'm sorry. I dropped it. I I, I didn't break. M money. You awkward fool. There, were, there was money in it. That's right. $10,000. I didn't know that. Honest. I wasn't trying to swipe no money. I only took the box because, well, because I figured you was the man who murdered your brother. I was. That's how I got the $10,000. Yeah, I, I figured there might have been some reason why you might have done it. I'm studying up on how to be a detective, and I... Oh, oh my God. Oh, oh, my gosh. You... You, you killed him. You're, you're the killer. When I came here for my box, I figured you'd be stupid enough not to open it, so I had some hope of recovering some money I desperately need. But now... Come with me. Why? I'll have to kill you, too. <laughs> Casey speaking. Oh, hello, Herman. What? He did? Out of the blue note? What did the guy look like? I see. Okay, Herman, thanks. Thanks very much. Look, Logan, I don't know who he was. I don't know at all, but Herman said... Uh, 
Herman, you know, the piano player at the Blue Note, yeah. he said he'd never seen the guy before, but the description sounded like Buddy Wilson. And Herman said it, it looked as though he forced Ethelbert to leave at the point of a gun. Well, I still don't see why we're driving out here. Well, because if Buddy Wilson is the one who picked up Ethelbert, it's my guess that he took him to the same spot he took his brother. For the same purpose. Well, the murder spot's right around this bend. All right. Pull up beside the road now and be quiet. Get your gun ready. What for? Just get your gun ready. I don't see anybody. No. Let's move up this way. There. Just beyond that fir tree. Oh, I see. Yeah, that's Buddy Wilson, all right. He's got a gun on Ethelbert. Logan, don't miss. Hurry, but don't miss. Good boy. Ethelbert, are you all right? Hello, Casey. Hello, Captain Logan. Uh... Hey, Logan. Logan, quick. Get some water. Ethelbert just fainted. For soft water shampooing, use Tony cream shampoo even in the hardest water tony cream shampoo yes even in the hardest water tony cream shampoo gives soft water shampooing that rinses away dandruff instantly leaves hair so soft so smooth so shining clean today bring out the sparkling beauty of your hair with tony cream shampoo get the handy tube or jar tony cream shampoo it's for you Gee, Ethelbert, you're wonderful. I am? You really are, Ethelbert, yeah. But gee, I, I don't know. I, I had to get my life saved. Oh, no, no, no. You saved your own life. I did? Certainly. You taught me that a criminal always returns to the scene of the crime, and that's what saved you. Hey, that's right. See, tell me, Ethelbert. Why did Buddy kill his brother? One of the two most commonest motives there is, money. The money that was in the cigarette box? You deduce correctly. Buddy had to hide that money fast the night we went to interview him, and the first place he seen turned out to be said cigarette box, which I swiped. Remarkable, Ethelbert, remarkable. But Casey, you'll have to get along without me. Why? Why, Ethelbert, what do you mean? I've decided to drop my detective course in favor of something more refined. Refined? What? They're going to give me credit toward my diploma for those detecting lessons I took, so I switched over to how to identify well-known wildflowers. Here's lesson one right here. Crime Photographer, starring Stotts Cotsworth as Casey, is directed by John Dietz. Tonight's story, written by Harry Ingram, and is based on the fictional character of Flash Gun Casey, created by George Harmon Cox. Original music by Archie Blyer, and the program features Miss Jan Minor as Anne, and John Gibson as Ethelbert. Herman Chittison as the Blue Note pianist. Bill Cullen asking you to listen again next week at the same time to another exciting adventure of Crime Photographer, and also inviting you to listen to This is Nora Drake, Radio's thrilling serial romance heard every Monday through Friday, 2.30 p.m. New York time over most of these stations. Both of these programs brought to you each week by Tony Home Permanent, the wave that gives that natural look, and the new Tony Cream Shampoo for soft water shampooing even in the hardest water. And now stay tuned for the Hallmark Playhouse featuring Meredith Wilson in And There I Stood With My Piccolo, which follows immediately over most of these CBS stations. This is CBS. The Columbia Broadcasting System.